friends. This week's video walks us through making this beautiful Father's Day card using Distress Oxide inks. Since the card doesn't have a greeting on the outside, it could also be used for other occasions such as a masculine birthday card. You may notice that I haven't been posting videos for the last couple weeks. Well, that's because we have a new addition to our family, and this is little Miss Rosie. She joined our family a couple weeks ago, and I took a couple of weeks off to spend some time with her and play with her while she's still so young and stinking cute. So here's a couple of gratuitous puppy pictures before we get started. I just love sleeping puppy pictures. They're just the cutest. So getting started with our project, here is an overview of the products that I used to create this week's card. You can find all the details down below in the notes as well as on our website. I found this seed packet at the grocery store and my father likes to grow milkweed to attract monarch, monarch butterflies to their yard. And I thought that would make a very nice theme for a Father's Day card. The Tim Holtz stamps that just came out this spring included a uh, stamp on it that looked a lot like milkweed and that was the perfect stamp to use to do the outside of the seed pocket. I took some brown craft paper and created a greeting for the inside on my inkjet printer. For the base of the card, I want to add some Viva Decor stamp paint, 3D stamp paint, and the color will be listed on the website. You can also find on our website a comparison of different ways to add some shine and shimmer to a card base without adding extra bulk to the card. And there'll be a link down below for that post as well on our website. Set this aside to dry and started working on the Distress Oxide panel. This is Vintage Photo ink and I spritzed it with some water and go through a series of adding different layers of color onto the card to create a base. Off camera in between I will dry each layer to be able to build up layer upon layer so they don't all mush together. Because the stamp and the seed packet had orange and green in it, I decided to supplement the vintage photo with some hints of the orange and green Distress Oxide inks. The orange is the spiced marmalade and the green is the peeled paint color. You can see here that I'm just using very light dabs of the spiced marmalade because I didn't want orange all over the place. I just wanted to add a couple of little hints of it and I'll do the same thing for the peel paint. The peel paint when it was wet and came out actually came out looking almost a little bit like a bluish patina color when the water reacted with it and it wasn't quite as green as it looks when it's wet. Uh, when we ended up after the card was dried. Here it looks really green and it's awesome. When the card actually dried it came out a little bit more of a bluish color. There were some areas along the edges that didn't have enough of the vintage photo and I did want to add a little bit extra layer on top of the orange and green to kind of knock it back a little bit. Because there were areas along the edge and the seed packet panel will be taking up most of the interior of it, I wanted to make sure the edge had color all over and there weren't any white gaps. So I used a paintbrush to help fill in some of the gaps. And after drying it, I flattened it out and set it aside. Now I'm taking the stamp and I'll have the list of the stamp set that it came from and I cut a piece of multimedia, mixed media paper from Strathmore to fit the size of the seed packet as well as a half inch along the top, left, and right sides to fold under to create a pocket. I created a mask using the outline of the stamp because I wanted to add some background stamping on it after I stamped the flowers in the middle of where the packet was going to go. So I centered the packet to see where I needed to stamp 
and then I positioned the stamp in the MISTI so that it was centered in the middle, taking into account the fact that there's a half inch along this left side as well as a half inch top and bottom. So you don't want to have it completely centered on the card, otherwise it would be pushed too far over to the left hand side. Wanted to make sure that it was nice and straight, and then I secured the card down with some magnets. I used a Hero Arts Ombre ink in an orange color to stamp the flower part, and I only added ink to the top portion of it, and then I used an alcohol pad to wipe away any ink that happened to be upon the area where the stems were. And I wanted to get that ready before I was ready to stamp. I've had this ombre ink for quite a while. I've never actually used it, so this was a perfect time to be busting it out. You can see I'm only stamping using the ink on the top half of the stamp where the flowers are. And then I use the alcohol ink pad to carefully dab away any orange ink that happened to be on the stems. When I did the first practice run of using the stamp and using the ink on it, areas where the orange happened to overlap the green turned out to be brown on the finished stamp, and I didn't want it to be brown colored um, for the stems, because the stems are then partly green and partly brown, and that just didn't look right. So here I stamp it onto the card for the orange layer. I then clean the stamp off and stamp the green stems onto the card. Once I'm done, which happened off camera because the camera happened to shut itself off, I take the mask that I had made using the outline of the stamp and I put a little bit of removable tape on the back of it so that it would hold in place very gently and I didn't want it to pick up any of the paper where we had just gotten done stamping. To create the background I used a Ducraft stamp that I've shown in other videos before where I had used it to create a background paper on a journal page but it just came out to be too dark. In this case I'm using potting soil and that's a nice brown color that was perfect for the background. This has a lot of vintage steampunky looking images collaged all together onto one stamp and I tried to work around exactly which part of the images that I wanted to show in the background. There was a balloon, there's a finger, there's the bottom of an ornate key, and I wanted to have some of the things showing and some are going to be covered by where the image is masked off. So This is Potting Soil Archival Link. It's a nice brown color. I also had the sepia color, but that's actually a little too dark and a little too red for what I wanted here. When I used this ink pad on these large scale stamps, for some reason the edges of the ink pad start to kind of shred away. And you can see that I removed it there. I made sure to press real hard to make sure that there is even coverage all around. And when I was happy with the coverage of the stamp onto the card, I removed the mask to show the flower stamp that's left behind. Now I'm using the Twinkling H2O paints, and I'll have the colors down below in the link to our website. The first part that I do is I fill in the background behind the flowers and that color interestingly enough is called Golden Monarch. So I've sped this up so that you don't have to watch me watercolor in slow motion. 
but basically I'm just wetting the paper and then filling in with some of the golden monarch color to kind of provide a little background color. These paints are translucent so you're able to see the stamping behind and they do have a beautiful shimmer to them. It's kind of hard to describe the color of the shimmer. It's just a shimmer. Uh, it's not, you know, a red tint or a blue tint or a green tint or anything like that. It just has a very nice shimmer when you hold it up to the light. There'll be pictures at the end where you can see the different contrast between the different layers on the card and you can pick up some of the shimmer in the photos at the end of the video. Because the half inch on the top, bottom, and left side will be folded under, I don't have to worry about painting all the way over to the edge. Here you can see the beautiful shimmer as I hold it up to the light. Off camera I went away and dried off the background color so that when I start painting in the flowers and the leaves that they don't start to blend in with the background color. Here I'm just coloring very lightly over the stamped image to provide a little extra watercolor fill for where the orange stamp was with the flowers. And then I use a very pretty combination of greens for the leaves. I believe that was Heavenly Bamboo and Pretty Peridot. Mixed together just to kind of match the color of the ink that I used, the archival ink. I'll let you watch as I watercolor and finish this section off. Here again, you can see the beautiful shimmer of the different colors of the Twinkling H2Os. So at this point, I'm done with all of my ink. I'm done with my stamping. I do go back in and add a little extra of the Golden Monarch to fill in some of the gaps in between now that the rest of it's been filled in and the flowers part has been painted. So now I'm working on my butterflies. You'll notice on the finished product that I don't have butterflies on the front of the card. Once I got them all created and put together and tried to position them, they just didn't really fit in with the front of the card and the muted colors kind of on the front. So I decided once I was done assembling the card that I would use them on the inside. These are memory box dies. They came out a couple years ago. I'll have the numbers on the website. Um, however, it's a background die that cuts the outline of the butterflies as well as the intricate die that you saw there that creates the uh, black part for the wings. You can also use some store-bought butterflies that I found at Michael's. Get my butterflies. I use the Lindy Stamping Magicals. The center selection is the Distress Oxide inks in similar colors, and the right-hand set of butterflies are created using Color Arts Twinkling H2Os. I determined that I liked the Lindy Stamping Magicals outcome the best, and so I chose three colors to create the different butterfly effects. Sprinkling them on with that fan brush, and then squirting them with some water to mix the colors.
off camera, I dried off the panel so it was nice and dry before I went and used the dye to run it through my Sizzix machine. I also ran some black cardstock through with the black outline dyes and got ready to assemble everything. Using a glue pen, I attached the black outline on top of the colored panels to create my butterflies. You can see here the finished product and how they look up close. And you can see the different colors that were used to create the backgrounds, the yellows and the reds and the oranges. Now to go on and assemble the rest of the card. So I cut a panel of dark brown cardstock, a sixteenth of an inch on each side larger than the seed panel. I folded in the half inch on either side of the top, bottom, and left and put some score tape on. I leave the little tails. I don't pull the tape off until I get it completely centered exactly where I want it. So that way it doesn't stick down until I have it with the proper reveal on each side. And then I pull off each of the different strips to firmly attach it onto the base. This panel is sized perfectly to allow the seed packet to fit in. You could also put a gift card in there. Off camera, I had taken the card base and attached the Distress Oxide panel onto it. And now it's ready for final assembly. I tried to put words that said Happy Father's Day using die cuts on it, but it just didn't fit. I also tried to use the butterflies on the front and they just didn't look right. So I ended up centering the seed packet panel right center in the middle of the Distress Oxide panel. And at the end, I like that composition the best. So here I'm just taping everything up make sure that it sits firmly down. This panel is taped down on all four sides, whereas the front watercolor panel is only taped on three sides to allow the packet to be inserted in underneath. I hope that my dad notices that there's the seed packet in there. Um, it's not overly obvious when you're looking at the cards head on, so. I always make sure before I attach anything permanently that I make sure that it's the inside of the card base is facing in the right direction and I also make sure I understand exactly where I want it to be centered before I put the tape down. That is kind of the beauty of using the score tape with the backing on it and only revealing the corners like I did for the watercolor panel. But here I wanted to use my tape runner. And once I'm committed, you're committed because that tape will come back up without tearing the distress oxide panel down below. Yep, wanted to make sure inside was in the right spot, facing the right direction. I have made a couple cards where I have done that incorrectly. I had to start all over again. It was rather sad. So here I'm just attaching the butterflies randomly in a couple places around the greeting on the inside. And that is about it for this Father's Day card. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe to our channel and check out our website at www.inkonmyelbows.com. Thank you for watching.